Yo, guys, welcome back to another episode with some commentary. Uh, I do some do some sick shit in this episode. I'm not gonna lie. I'm uh, over here playing on the left. My buddy Pete on the right asked me if I want to play some goat, but I didn't have a goat deck with me, so I borrowed another player's goat deck, and it turns out to be Panda Burn. I didn't even know this was a thing. I knew that there was a panda deck, and I knew that there was a burn deck. I didn't know you, you, know, you put them together and you get something horrific. But hey, I actually had fun playing it. I'm not going to lie. I'm not the biggest fan of GOAT, and I've only ever really played Chaos, like Chaos Turbo. I played a little bit of GOAT Control and GOAT, um, oh, and Chaos Control. But never burn. I'm not a huge, huge burn player. I think it's really shitty. But in in like past formats where I'm not playing for anything and I don't care about being competitive, then you know I can kind of, kind of justify it. But Pete on the right opens up a Thunder Dragon. That card is the most loyal card I've ever seen in my life. And then follows it up with Pot of Greed and then a T set and pass. I don't really know what I'm doing with this deck. I mean, it's not like GOAT format is really complicated, but as far as like playing the handout correctly, what to keep off graceful, what to pitch, I don't know that a whole lot. So I'm going to take my time a little bit here and think about it. But you can see my hand's, hand's pretty solid. I think I'm going to discard the... I want to say I discard True Nade. Yeah, discarding the true nade, discarding the big shield gardener. Now, honestly, that was a misplay. I don't know how I misplayed in GOAT playing a burn control deck, but I did. I should have discarded the whatever the doll card is, it acts like a MSC, but like a way shittier version. I should have discarded that and kept the giant true nade. But I did not. Normal summon giant rat. I'm going to attack into his mag magical merchant and then play the continuous spell. Uh, I can't remember what this one's called, I'll look it up in just a second. But essentially if you play any card from your hand or set a card from your hand, you take 500 damage and that goes for either player. It is called Chain Energy. Absolutely annoying card especially in GOAT format because you have to set everything and activate everything from your hand. But he's going to set two more cards and then I believe pass it over to me. So nothing too crazy happening. I mean, it's a GOAT game. So I'm actually going to speed it up a little bit. There's, there's just a lot of time in GOAT that is just like wasted time like if you're watching it you're just watching people sit around thinking about setting a card or maybe attacking or there's not a whole lot going on so i activate bait doll that's the shitty version of mst i, I believe it's a, if you reveal a trap off of it then it gets destroyed but i revealed the book of moon so it's gonna set my giant rat then i'm gonna set a card taking 500 damage because of chain energy and then passing it on over There is, so Pete actually has a pretty bad matchup against this deck because he plays uh, Goat Control. Well, he plays Chaos Control, but with the like, three scapegoat metas and stuff. So if you activate scapegoat and you put four monsters on your side of the board, then that just plays into all of the burn traps and especially plays into just desserts or, or whatever that, I think it's desserts. But you can see Pete, he's uh, gonna activate Morphing Jar right here, which honestly, Probably not the best idea against a, uh, a burn player. You probably want to reduce your hand to a mi like the absolute minimum, but hey, what do I know? You can see me just successively shuffling over here on the left. You gotta admit though, it's a clean shuffle, so I mean, you know, you guys can't complain about it too much. I'll roast myself. And a normal summon the breaker, and he's gonna pop my chain energy. I think he's tired of paying 500 to you know, get anything out of his hand. Attacking into my face down. I believe it's the giant rat still. So I'm gonna get a. I'm going to be able to summon off of that card. And there's a there's very few options to summon. Uh, I believe that's a cyber jar or fiber jar. I can't remember which one it is that I'm looking at. There's a morphing jar and then a panda. And 
I think those are really the only only options. I mean, there's a big shield gardener that you can summon, but you have to summon an attack position. So, not the best, but hey, I'm going to summon a panda, and it gains a certain amount of attack for each monster your opponent controls. I believe it's 500 attack. And then playing the area limit B, which is just a, a super annoying card. I mean, it's a it's a pseudo floodgate essentially back in this day. So it just changes all level four higher monsters to defense position. He's gonna set another monster, flip his morphing jar to defense, and pass it on over. So I got the panda on my side of the board. I'm feeling pretty good. But it's a pretty pretty big panda. Honestly, he's gonna mirror force it. No biggie. Honestly, I have another panda in hand, so it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna activate, uh, is it Secret Burial? I think? I think that's what that one is, but it does 200 damage for each card on the field, on your opponent's side of the field and in their hand. So I'm gonna burn, burn him for about 18, and then summon a giant rat, and it goes directly to defense. Because of the continuous swell that I have up. Affects both players. Passing run over, he's gonna normal some, or he's gonna flip summon the Dequichi. Just goes to defense because the uh, continuous. And he's gonna normal summon the Sukiyoma and flip my giant rat, knocking it to get it out of the way. Right before end phase, I'm gonna activate Just Desserts to burn him for another, for an extra 500 while he has that Tsukiyomi on field. Normal summon Panda, attack right into that Morphing Jar. And it's not looking too good for Pete over here, man. I mean, his life points are getting low. There's not a whole lot you can really do in a position like this, though. I mean, like, realistically, what's he supposed to do against all this? Like, he, he's drawn two or three off the Dekoichi, just trying to draw into an out, hopefully like a heavy storm or even an MST, but he's just, he's not able to see any of those cards that, that are really going to do anything. Or I mean, he's he's gotten rid of one panda too. So I mean, if you, he can just get rid of this one and then, you know, find a way to get rid of the next too, he'd be sitting in a pretty good spot. I'm going to activate Trio, Pajama Trio to lock out the rest of his zones. And he's just going to scoop it up from there. I mean, just not not a whole lot that he could really do there, man. Activating Thunder Dragon going into game 2, getting another 2 out of the deck. Like I said, that card is oil, it just always knows when to pop up. It's like the, uh, if anyone's a Harry Potter fan, there's a, the Sword of Gryffindor. It appears when you need it the most, and that is what Thunder Dragon is. That card is just, it knows what's up, man. It's faithful. You can see my... My hand, I got a secret or a chain energy and an Ojama Trio. He's gonna activate the MST to showing the chain energy. Activating Pot of Greed. Drawing the two cards. Got a giant rat and a face down on my side of the field. I want to say the face down might be a big shield gardener. Not totally sure. And uh, P activates scapegoat here. And then he assumes that I'm going to attack into one of the tokens, but I'm just going to leave all four up because uh, the plan is to burn. Right? So I want to see, or I want him to have as many monsters on the field as possible. And you can see me overextending here. I already have two monsters on the board, and I try to normal summon the third, with, which is a panda, and he torrential tributes me. So it just clears the entire board. Not much I can do here, but I have another trio and a nightmare wheel. I have chain energy already up on the board. So I'm not in too bad of, bad of a position. I just need to see more burn cards. Either burn cards or control. So drawing into a panda. Set pass, set pass. That's pretty much what the, the next few turns are gonna be. Neither of us really wanna commit any cards or you know really do anything. So you're just gonna see us pretty much build up our hands, wait it out, see what we can do. In a position like this, you just don't wanna be the first one to really make a move. This is more of a reactive game state right here.
type of morphing jar in my hand, but I definitely don't want to play that at all because we're both, you know, we both have good hand sizes right here. And the more cards that Pete has, honestly, the more I'm going to benefit from it because I can just, you know, with Secret Burial, I can just burn him. Burn him for a heavier amount. But you're going to see here that I set two cards, pass it over to him. So I got four back row. I'm not too scared of Heavy Storm at this point because he has three, three set in the back row. So I mean if he does Heavy Storm then he has to get rid of three of his cards too. I'm going to Magic Cylinder his DD Warrior Lady. Just hitting him with that Uno Reverse card. And then he passes over to me. So I have a Just Desserts and a Trio in hand, and I should definitely set both of those. Um, but I activate the Trio on field. So locking out all of his monster zones, and then summoning the good old hand. Like I said, I think this gives 500 attack for each monster your opponent controls, and it does piercing damage. So attacking right into a goat is just that, that's prime damage right there. That's what you want to see. Looks like I had a giant Trunade in my hand too, so I probably should have just bounced all of his back row, then summoned the panda, and then attacked, but yeah. Who uh who really knows how to play this this panda burn deck, man? I mean if you know how to play this properly and you're just a pro, yeah, just just don't even talk to me, bro. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I can't. Can't talk to burn players. It's against my religion. Pete's weighing his options over here got the Magician of Faith. I'm gonna activate the Just, just Desserts right here. I think at this point I have him at right at like a thousand. So if he plays two more cards from his hand, he's pretty much screwed. I mean, at this point, it's like if you guys have ever played chess, I have my opponent in check right now. It's only, you know, I, there, there's like one more move or one more turn until I get him in checkmate. Nightmare Wheel to finish out the game. Absolutely, you know, disgraceful video that I'm about to upload to this channel. Um, if you guys like this, then yeah, I I don't even I don't even know what to tell you guys. You guys are probably a sicko if you like to watch burn, but I appreciate you guys nonetheless for sticking till the end, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.